Paul Saladino talks about a species specific diet. And it, it, it goes to, it speaks to whatever species is on the planet. Whether you're talking about uh, a, a orangutan or a dog or a cow or a human or an elephant, a species specific diet. And we're the only species on the planet that eats a diet that is not our native diet. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I always appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate you sharing this podcast. I appreciate you rating and reviewing. It all means so much to me because without you guys, uh, this wouldn't be ranked. We're in the top 30s. We're ranked in the top 30 um, of all nutrition, health, weight loss podcasts in the United States. So that's great. I would love to get that up into the top 10, top five. Uh, and with your help, I can do that. So thank you. Today, we are talking about a species-specific diet, which, by the way, is hard to say when your lips are filled with filler. Species-specific diet. Species-specific diet. <laughs> say that five times fast. I can't do that. Uh, half my face is frozen with Botox and fillers. Don't send me any hate mail. I don't care what you think. I'm going to grow old gracefully. At the time of this recording, I'm getting ready to turn 45, and I'll be darned if I look it. So a species-specific diet. Let's dive into what that is and how it even got, uh, how I even really got focused and kind of got on this kick. It's not really a kick. I don't really want to say that it's just a kick, like it's something that's going to come and go. It's it's really something that I absolutely believe in, but I never quite um, called it that in the beginning. So backing up, let me give you a little history here. So in 2012... I, that's when I really started to be at the rock bottom of my own weight loss, my, my own weight and health. My weight, I was at rock bottom being that I was the heaviest I'd ever been. I was 174, 174 pounds. That was heavy for me, you guys. I know that you're like, Psh, I wish I was 174. Listen, we're all on different journeys, okay? For me, my natural weight is 154. That's been my fighting weight for 20 years. All right, that's a good weight for me. And of course, as we age, we shrink, so I'll probably have to drop that weight. But for now, that's my that's what, what I call fighting weight. That's my goal weight, my natural weight. And I fluctuate between 54 and 58, depending on time of the month, depending on travel, depending on uh, if I eat popcorn or whatever I do. Weight fluctuates. So we, in maintenance, we don't worry about your weight going up. We worry about it coming right back down because the weight's going to go up, but we want to make sure we bring it right back down. That's just a little sidebar. So it, in 2012, my weight was uh, high for me, 20 pounds higher, 174. I absolutely was miserable. I battled headaches. I battled stomach aches. I, um, I had brain fog. I was fatigued. I, um, I remember one time, Miles and I went to Maui. Uh, when did we go to Maui? No, what year? What year was it? Boy, I tell you, I've been hitting the head a lot. I can't remember exact dates anymore, but... I remember I was so heavily addicted to processed food and sugar and Diet Coke that we went to Maui and we stayed in Kihei for two weeks and Miles and I were both high-level cyclists, high-level. We've, we've, we've ridden our mountain bikes and our road bikes all over the world. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. And we are good on bikes. I know that as a female, I was riding with just all, all males. So at the top at the top of my game, I was one of the fastest females on a bike. I was very good, very strong. And we would ride our bikes through Maui, on Maui, on the island of Maui. And uh, I, I even rode up Haleakala 
on my bike, uh, 10,000 feet of climbing uh, in 33 miles, and I did it. I rode up, and then I and then Miles brought me back down in the car because I didn't want to ride down. I only wanted to ride up. But I was absolutely miserable. I was so heavily addicted to Diet Coke. I was drinking one to two, two liters a day. Um, I My body ached. My joints ached. Uh, my gut was hanging down. Uh, my cellulite was sticking out. My skin was flaky. My face was fat. I was always swollen. I was always bloated. I looked like a bloated tick. I um, My... my vision wasn't as good. I, I wanted to nap all the time. And so this was my turning point. I really felt bad because I was, tr I was riding and I was training and I was working out. I was teaching spin classes. I was, um, lifting weights and I was personal training. I was doing personal training. So I'm very, very active for three to five hours a day of my own fitness, my own working out, not to mention training other clients. That was even addition to that. So I was the fittest and the fattest I had ever been during that time, right around 2012. And so, uh, yeah, I was I'm just double checking my dates in my head. I think it was 2012, 20, yeah, 2012, 2013, 2012, I think. So Miles and I, um, Miles, I was miserable. And at the time, you might be wondering what I was eating. Well, because I was such an elite level cyclist and I rode 300 miles a week on my road bike and so did Miles, we would eat pretty much anything we wanted. We didn't really have, now that I think back, I really don't know if we had any rules at all. I think we thought that the amount of cycling we were doing and working out, me teaching two spin classes a day, in addition to my own riding when I got off work, in addition to my weightlifting, in addition to CrossFit, in addition to all that other stuff I was doing, I guess we kind of thought that we could just eat whatever we wanted. And Miles would, you know, we call him Chef Miles for a reason, because once he retired and we got together, he was, he took up cooking and baking as a hobby. And so he would make, I specifically remember homemade pasta. And of course, the homemade pasta was still, even though it wasn't out of a box, it was still made with highly inflammatory oils and flowers and things like that. Uh, and I remember him rolling out the pasta, you know, over draped over his arm, and he'd roll, roll, roll. You know how you do that? You those of you guys know that that little rolling thing, the two rolling pins put together, and you roll the pasta through there, the dough, and you just keep rolling it thinner and thinner and thinner. Then you roll it through the thing that slices it, right? And he would make home, and it was absolutely incredible. Like, it was so, so very good. It was just perfect, like just al dente, just perfect. And I remember eating a lot of food like that. Also, um, he would go to Costco and get that big giant bag of peanut M&Ms and Ziploc at the top. And we would, I, and he would keep that in the cupboard, and we would just dish out of it as much as we wanted. There was no holds barred here on anything we drank we drank soda you know we drank alcohol at night it was all the time anything we wanted we did pizza we did burgers at hawkins hack at, at um hawkins pack out over there off bogus basin and hill road you guys you boise people know what i'm talking about come on hawkins pack out the best swiss <laughs> mushroom burgers ever <laughs> but we just ate this stuff all the time so I look back now, of course, I'm, I totally know why I was so sick all the time and fat. And I just never felt good. I never had any energy. And I just thought it was because I was writing all the time. Um, so put that kind of chemically processed crap food, it, all that sugar, all that Diet Coke mixed in with an excessive exercise, completely beating up, beating up my adrenals, cortisol all over the map. Everything's just a huge mess you know, insulin, like I could just go on. I was a metabolic mess, but I was, but I was one of the fittest athletes ever. That's, that's why when I talk about you guys being fat athletes, I know what that's like. I understand. I get it. I was there. I totally get this. Um, so that's when I, I kind of hit my breaking point where I was really miserable. I remember one time we, we took a spring and we went, this is before we had a, a ha cabin and before we, we, skied a lot and stuff. We would go to like Park City and ski, but we didn't have a cabin at Tamarack. So we didn't have skiing literally at our back door uh, like we do now. Um, so we would have to go take trips to go skiing, but we didn't have a lot going on in the wintertime. And Miles used to get seasonal depression before we got our cabin and our dog, which has completely changed our lives, uh, the, the dog and Tamarack and everything. And so Miles would get 
uh, this this seasonal depression and um, he would want to take a trip someplace warm in the in kind of the midwinter springtime kind of when it was just nasty and Boise and so we would go to LA down to um, hmm I wish I could remember the <laughs> well we would just go to LA and we would ride with a cycling group through the through the hills through the Laguna Hills and through all through the hills in, in LA and um, we would stay at a nice hotel there and we would be with, with a cycling group and we would spend a week just riding every day. Very, very hard climbs, very, but it was warm and it got us out. And that was my turning point. I remember being, um, we had just ridden, you know, like 50, 60, 70 miles that day and, and thousands of feet of climbing, three or 4,000 feet of climbing. And, and uh, I, you know, I'd burned thousands of calories and I got back to the hotel and I remember I remember looking at myself in the mirror, my cycling kit, which cycling kits are uh, the, the top and the bottom, they're tight to allow for aerodynamic wind flow to, for a cyclist to be aerodynamic. I remember my fat was just, was just busting out around our kit, our, my kit. And Miles and I would drive to LA. So we had the whole, the whole drive from Boise to LA. I remember just eating the whole way. I was eating. I had I had snacks. I had red vines. I had Diet Coke. I had, you know, chocolate covered almonds. I had almond roca. I had cookies and crackers and chips. I had everything I I wanted, and I remember being in LA. Um, we would ride and then we would go out for pizza, and then we would ride and we go out for pad thai, and then we'd, we'd we would ride and we would go f out for something else, and it that's what we you just thought. Well, I just burned you know, 2,000 2, calories today on the bike, I can eat what I want. And I did that all the time. So I remember looking in the mirror, coming back from one of our trips I was in the hotel room. I was kind of taking off my cycling kit to put on. We were all going to the pool. And I just looked and I had fat busting out around the elastic. In, and I just had fat everywhere. And I was just, I was so unhappy with myself. And I was so miserable. I was so tired. And I, I just had had it. I'd had it. So I started talking to Miles about this. Like, I think he kind of knew that I was unhappy. And so I started talking to Miles about, um, like, I don't know what is wrong with me. Why why am I this way? Why, why am I so fat when I ride so much? And why am I 20 pounds overweight? Why is this happening to me? I don't feel good. I don't have any energy. I hurt all the time. Everything hurts hurts. Um, my back always hurts. I had just chronic back problems. And so Miles started doing some research and we, and we both came across Mark Hyman's book, Eat Fat, Get Thin. And so he read the book first and he said, I think you need to take a look at this. It, this is what Mark Hyman is calling the high fat lifestyle. And I thought, high fat, are you crazy? What is that? You know, we don't eat fat. That's, that's nuts. And he said, no, you do eat fat. You just reduce your carbs down. And I was like, reduce your carbs? How the heck am I supposed to cycle? How am I supposed to do 300 miles a week? How am I supposed to ride through the Pyrenees Mountains? How am I supposed to ride through the mountains of, you know, in LA? Uh, in the, how am I supposed to do the kind of stuff we do, do without? I mean, I did the death ride, you guys. 10,000 feet, 11, 12,000 feet. I did it in 10 hours. I mean, it was just incredible. The death ride in, in, uh, in Lake Tahoe. How am I supposed to do all this hard stuff that I do without carbs? So I was willing to try anything. I tried it on myself, and it worked. Then Miles tried it. Tried it. It worked for him. We both felt immediately better. I was introduced to the high-fat, low-carb lifestyle. I started to spread that lifestyle among my clients. 2013 comes along. 2014, I'm kind of, I'm kind of using this Code Red lifestyle for my clients now in addition to personal training. And then I decide to stop personal training altogether and just do full nutrition because I knew, wow, the, the changing their diet can get, yield so much of a better result than, than, uh, personal training, than working out. You know, it's so much more powerful to change your diet and lose the weight than it is to actually work it off in the gym. So I quit personal training and I, uh, started code red full time, the code red lifestyle, nutrition only full time. I'm watching someone uh, outside my house. It's slick, and they're barely making it up the driveway. They must not be. <laughs> they must not be from Idaho because you guys know you got to keep up the momentum when you're driving on uh, nasty roads. Come on, Idahoans. <laughs> so I started. I went. I had a little office down downtown, and that's when I was doing Code Red uh, full time, full time nutrition, full time spreading the message of of hope and healing through nutrition only. But I didn't understand what the 
proper human diet, a species-specific diet. I didn't know those terms. I had never heard those terms. I just knew that meat, vegetables, nuts, eggs, seeds, seafoods, and fat were what I found to yield the best weight loss among my clients. That's not even what Mark Hyman even preaches. That's my, the Code Red Lifestyle is a hybrid of many programs that I have experimented with. I have tried everything. I've tried keto, I've tried Mediterranean, I've tried Whole30, I've tried all kinds of diets. I even tried HCG, I tried CR500, I tried all kinds of, I tried the bodybuilder diet where you have, you eat six times a day. I mean, I've tried everything. I always do it on myself first. So you can always rest assured if I, if I get, if I tell you something, it's because I've tried it out myself first. I don't ever ask you to do something that I'm not aware of what, what it does. And it's just like, I mean, I, I had an affiliate, uh, one of our companies that we're affiliated with came to me and said, would you, would you promote this product? The only thing they have to do is sign up for text messages with us. And I was like, you know what? It's a really good deal that you're, that you're given, but I am not comfortable signing up for text messages. If I'm not comfortable with, I'm not going to ask my rebels to be, to sign up for text messages from you guys. I just, I'm not comfortable with this. And so if I'm not comfortable with something, I'm not going to do it. And I've tried everything out there, you guys. So I hadn't, I, I, I started, like I used to use, to let people have cheese and I took that out when I experimented with it. And I just noticed that people lose a lot better when they cut out cheese. I used to allow people to do a really high fat, more like a keto kind of lifestyle. I brought the fat down. I found that better people do better when they, then they bring the fat down and allow other things in their diet. I used to allow cheap meals. I don't do that. So over time I have honed the code red lifestyle into what it is now and the foods that we eat, the rules that we have, and the rules have stayed the same. The foods have stayed the same. They've been going strong like this for the last couple of years. I really have found that sweet spot and I have found what works. But in, in uh, the summer of June, July of 2019, I met Paul Saladino and Dr. Ken Berry. Paul, Dr. Paul Saladino is an MD, and Dr. Ken Berry is an MD. Both of these guys are authors. I absolutely adore both of them. Uh, and I met them at KetoCon in Austin, Texas. I was there on a... a you know, I, I had a VIP ticket, so I got to meet the speakers and I got to go backstage and I got to go to a, a VIP dinner and I got to speak to both of these guys. And I have since maintained a relationship with both of them. And uh, I had heard that I sat in Paul Saladino's, in, in his workshop, and he's nicknamed the carnivore MD. So he believes in a carnivore diet. Now, Code Red believes in an animal-based diet. We're not fully carnivore. We don't believe that that's the best transition for people to go from the standard American diet straight into carnivore. We find that it's much better to go from the standard American diet into code red. But I, I absolutely love Paul Saladino. I, I, I just adore the guy. I, I think he's fantastic. I'm telling you, like, I'm just saying like, look, if Miles dies, I'm just saying, okay. All right. Too far, too far. Actually speaking of miles, that dude is so freaking healthy. He's going to outlive all of us. That guy's going to be around forever. Don't send me a nasty message. I'm just kidding. I love him. I just love Paul. I think he's just doing great work and I, I like his message. I like the way he delivers it. I think he's kind and respectful to his guests and I've learned a lot from him. So Paul Saladino talks about a species specific diet and it, it, it goes to it speaks to whatever species is on the planet. Whether you're talking about uh, a uh, orangutan or a dog or a cow or a human or an elephant, a species-specific diet. And we're the only species on the planet that eats a diet that is not our native diet. Paul Saladino wrote a book called The Carnivore Code. I'll link it up below. It's pretty tough to read. It's very detailed. I mean, he's extremely gifted. He's very smart. But he here's a line from his book. I want to read it to you guys. Eating animals have been an integral part of our existence as humans and pre-humans for a very long time, probably for at least five to six million years. So we do believe this is a species-specific diet. Our, our species was designed to eat an animal-based diet. That's what that means. A species-specific diet I've been really focused on here for the last couple of years, the proper human diet, which is a term that came from Ken Berry, Dr. Berry. Um, I heard him at the same keto conference uh, say, 
proper human diet. And I've been using that. I don't know if that's originally his phrase, but that's just where I heard it. I heard that from him and I heard species specific diet from Paul Saladino. And I've just adopted those phrases and I use them all the time because it's what we believe, what I believe wholeheartedly. And so about a year ago, I started, I've been really focusing on species specific diet. And we, as you guys know, our dog, Annabelle, uh, is the love of our life. We've had Annabelle in, in uh, April of 2021. It will have been six years. We will have had her for six years. And Annabelle came to us. I rescued her from a, from a um, shelter. Um, we, they, they, don't, they don't know for sure how old she was, either approximately two or three years old. So that means she's approximately eight or nine now. Uh, six plus two. Yeah, eight or nine now. <laughs> uh, so... About a year ago, I got I, I started thinking, well, species-specific, species-specific. Well, wait a minute. Dogs were never created to eat kibble. Now, can I just sidebar here and say I am not – this is just what I'm thinking, all right? I'm not criticizing you for what you feed your dog. I'm just telling you what was going through my head and how I got to this whole thing that I'm trying to get around to telling you guys. All right, you, you feed your dog whatever the heck you want. I'm just telling you what I believe for animals and what I believe for Annabelle and what I believe in general. So I said, wait a minute, a kibble is not what dogs, the canine species, was meant to eat. If you look back on the ancestors, if you look back on what canines have always eaten for a millennia, it has been meat. They are carnivorous animals. They are carnivorous species. And so I started thinking, even though we feel, feed her a grain-free kibble, I, I just was convicted about that. That's not giving her the best food that, she, that her native diet, that she was meant and created to eat. Kibble is made in a factory. It's made with fillers. Even though it's not made with grain as a filler, it still has fillers that she is foreign to her body. Now, this is what was going through my mind. And I just started feeling like it really, I wasn't, I just, it didn't sit right with me. So I went to my vet on one of our vet checks. Uh, Annabelle was 80, um, 83 pounds. And the vet said, you know, Annabelle's overweight. She needs to be no more than 70 to 75 pounds. I don't want her to see, I don't want to see her more than 75 pounds. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got an overweight dog. I can't believe it. So uh, I, I said, well, can I ask you about a, um, a raw food diet that's meat? And she said, my vet said, no, no, no. Don't mess around with that. Don't go down that road. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're doing. You're messing with bacteria. You're, you're going to poison. You're going to make yourself dog sick. You don't know. Don't do it. Just don't. Just feed her kibble. Feed her a good quality kibble and call it good. And I was thinking to myself, man, I just, and I love my vet. I, you know, my vet is about as young as my niece. She's like, hey, I'm Stephanie. Oh. And I'm like, these vet, these doctors and these vets get like younger and younger. You know, it's, oh my gosh. And you know, she's sitting on the, on the floor playing with Annabelle. Like, hey, Annabelle, come over here and see me, you know. So I do love her. She's super nice. Um, but I, I just, I walked away feeling so defeated. Like, oh man, I just, this niggled at me. This isn't right. This isn't right. If we want to extend the life of, of our dog, why not feed them raw? Why not feed them what they were, what they would eat in the wild, what their bodies were meant to eat. We don't put a chimpanzee in a zoo and feed them pop tarts and lean cuisines. We feed them a species specific diet. We don't put a giraffe in a zoo and feed them, you know, uh, again, Pop-Tarts and, and, and Cheetos. We feed them a species-specific diet. But yet with our dogs, because they're domesticated and they're pets, we go for convenience and cheap, and we feed them kibble. I just, it wasn't sitting well with me. It just wasn't right. This is not a species-specific diet. So I came to Miles and I said, Miles, I don't know why. I can't shake this feeling. I think we should be feeding Annabelle raw meat. That's what her, that was what she was designed to eat. Christy, he said, stop, you know, just, she's fine. This is expensive kibble that we feed her. It's grain-free at least. And I said, it still has fillers in it, Miles. I, I just don't think it's as good as just raw meat. And he, and he, did he did not want to hear now miles is old and he is not he is not very good at changing his mind let me tell you guys the guy is old and he's stubborn 
and he would not listen to me. So I came to a couple of friends of mine and I said, hey, that I knew fed raw. And I said, hey, uh, you know, what do you know about raw food diet? And my friend said, yeah, I've been feeding raw food to my dogs. And she showed me pictures of her dogs. She told me different conditions that her dogs had that had cleared up when she started feeding them raw. And I said, wow, you know, like, I don't know. I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know how much to feed them. I didn't know what nutrient profile looked like. I didn't know if I should cook some things. Does that mean I feed raw fish and raw chicken? No, that's not good to do. You know, well, what about raw meat? Well, raw meat was okay. Well, what about organ meats? What about, what about, you know, I, like I just, I had so many questions. It was so overwhelming. So I took the next six months to research a species specific diet for Annabelle using my friend's help and the help of some websites with some experts. I started slowly learning about a raw food species specific diet for a dog. And I, I started incorporating. So I started slow. I started with a raw egg in her kibble, warmed up, mix, mix, mix. And I wanted to take it really slow because I didn't want her to have diarrhea. I didn't want to screw up because anytime you change your diet, guys, people, any species, you're going to have motility changes. You're going to have gut changes and stuff. And so I started to incorporate slowly over the next six months. I slowly started to, to transition her over to more raw food and less kibble, more raw food and less kibble. I, I incorporated teeny, teeny, incorporated a teeny, teeny, teeny amount of liver, teeny, tiny, like a half a teaspoon amount of liver into her food. I watched her, I watched her poop. I watched her, her, her mood, her attitude, her energy. I looked, checked her eyes. I checked her ears. I checked, I, of course I checked her poop. That's very telling. A dog has a very quick digestive system and you can see pretty quick if you, you know, whatever you fed them. And, and it, the whole time I'm doing this with Annabelle, it is really becoming clear to me how important it is for us as humans to have a species specific diet as well. So fast forward to the present, it's been about a year now and Annabelle's been completely off kibble for a long time. Now Miles, he is about 75% on board with this. So he will feed her the raw, but then he feeds her a handful of kibble in with the raw. And it's, uh, it's always, uh, I always like, I, you know, what do you, do you want to die on that bridge? I don't know. I won't. Cause it's miles. I mean, I'm really glad he came around to what he came around to, but I think he, he sees that Annabelle not only is now sitting at 72 pounds, so she lost 10 pounds. Her coat is shinier. Her eyes are clearer. Uh, her ears are clearer. Uh, she has more energy. Um, she's getting older, but it's like she's aging backwards. Her teeth look better. Um, she doesn't have stinky toots. Her, her poop is much smaller because her body is now utilizing almost 100% of what she eats. And it just became more clear to me over time that that is the proper diet for her species. She eats um, meat, not all at once, but meat, fish, chicken. The fish and chicken are always cooked. Meat, fish, chicken, eggs, um, fat, like um, fat that comes off of bacon, that kind of stuff, bone broth, uh, and then a, a small slice of liver in every meal. And I rotate them through. You know, I have kind of a little system now. And Miles will buy expired meat or will will get, if there's some extra meat left over from a hunter, I'll get meat, uh, from my dad. Uh, I'll get meat, um, you know, uh, from a butcher. I'll sometimes I give her a butcher box. I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, I have a lot of it and cause I'm a, an affiliate partner with them. And so I get a lot of meat from butcher box and sometimes she'll get a slice up sirloin. I mean, the dog is my life. The dog is absolutely my life. I don't see anything wrong with, I mean, you guys might not view your dogs like this, but and I just can't believe how much it has cleared up a lot of things with her and made her even better. So a species-specific diet really makes sense to me. I've watched how it transitioned my dog and has uh, transformed her life. I know through doing what I do with Code Red that it trans has, transitioned, has transformed so many lives, including my own. I know what I feel like when I go off the proper human diet and I go on... Uh, and I, I, and I eat something that's, that's processed. I feel like absolute garbage. I get depressed. I don't want to get out of bed. My energy goes down. My body aches, uh, old injuries from, I have a couple of old injuries start hurting, uh, inflammation. I can't get my ring off. Um, I have a headache. I have a stomach ache. My, I have like 
diarrhea or I'll be constipated, real extreme motility changes. Um, I don't like it. I'm not, not to even mention the fact that the scale goes up and my clothes don't fit. When I get away from a species-specific diet, which is for the human species, I hurt. And it makes so much sense. It makes sense to stick as close to our ancestors as possible. And what really gets me is somebody that tries to, I don't, I don't fault the doctors. I mean, the traditionally medically trained doctors, they're not trained. Their paradigm is a pill for every ill. Their, 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 their medical paradigm is, is shaped around the pharmaceutical industry. It's, it's shaped by money and they are not taught proper nutrition in medical school. They're not taught to treat chronic diseases with nutrition first. They're great at acute. They're great at emergency medicine. If I break a leg, if I fall off my bike and I break a leg, please don't take me to a naturopath. Please take me to an uh, orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> please take me to the ER. Please, if I get in a car accident, please take me to the ER. Emergency medicine is absolutely incredible. I am, I am amazed at my husband. Got, had kidney cancer, removed his kidney. The guy was up and at him. Uh, the next day, he, get, he went home from the hospital the next day. Six weeks later, he's back riding his bike like nothing ever happened. Kidney cancer, he had a nephrectomy, and the guy is back to 100%. I mean, it's incredible what modern medicine, but as far as chronic diseases, no, they've got it wrong. They've got it wrong. Metabolic diseases, they've got it wrong. And we don't, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about... Um, we don't talk about food. We don't talk about nutrition. They don't treat things with nutrition first. Uh, and so when, when somebody comes to them, you know, you take your, do your dog to a vet. The first thing your dog's gonna, your vet's going to ask them, you're like, my dog's sick. Well, what have you been feeding them? That's the first thing they ask you. That's the first thing they ask, but they don't ask that at the, at the doctor's office. So when you transition from, from a, the standard American diet of processed food, 60% carbs, to Code Red, also known as the proper human diet, also known as a species-specific diet, you'll notice that you will feel so very good. Your energy will go up. Your, your, chronic, uh, your chronic pain, fatigue, uh, eczema, rosacea, um, uh, pain in your knees, your arthritis, your swelling, your brain fog, your vision will improve. Uh, you'll sleep better. You might reduce or eliminate medications. It's absolutely incredible, and it happens so quick. Your hair and nails will grow. Your skin will glow. Your clothes will fit looser. Your weight will go down. All these things happen, but it seems to be still uh, poo-pooed by the traditional medical community. And it's interesting to me. I want to take a line out of uh, Dr. Uh, Ken Berry's book, Lies My Doctor Told Me. Ken Berry is a board-certified MD, family medical doctor, and he wrote a book called Lies My Doctor Told Me. I, am a, I, I love Ken and Nisha Berry. They're wonderful folks. Um, but he he took, he has posted a line from his book, and the line is from Richard. Oh, it's Feynman, 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 Feynman. Sorry, <laughs> Richard Feynman. I I the the word could go either way. Richard Feynman, Paul, uh, Ken Berry put this quote from Richard Feynman in his book. It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. So for a doctor, for you to come into your doctor's office for your checkup, you're down 62 pounds, your skin is glowing, your increased energy, your libido has come back, everything's fitting good, you're feeling good, your A1C is down, your fasting glucose is down, your triglycerides are down, your blood pressure is down, your waist circumference is down. And for your doctor to say to you, well, I don't know about this high-fat, low-carb, code red diet now, what, what, wait a minute. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. So uh, you're telling your doctor, wait a minute, doc. I feel freaking fantastic. Just because you're not up to date on the latest, uh, it, the latest science data and research about high fat, low carb lifestyle doesn't mean I should stop doing this. Remember, you are partners with your doctor. Your doctor works for you. Your doctor is a consultant for you. You have to go with what feels the best. And that means choosing either Whole30. If you've tried Code Red and you've tried Whole30 and you feel better on Whole30, my goodness, go do Whole30. If you have tried Code Red and you've tried Weight Watchers and you've done better on Weight Watchers, you just overall do better because Weight Watchers is on a point system and you can have anything you want as long as it fits in your points. So 
That means you can have a Snickers bar if it fits into your points. Well, that's fine if you do better on Weight Watchers because you're able to have that Snickers bar. Like, I just want you to be happy and healthy. You have to go with what feels the best. And, and if, if it doesn't matter how smart you are, Richard says, if it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. So if it doesn't agree with what you are experiencing, it's wrong. So you have to, if you have tried out the proper human species specific diet and you have felt better, but there are naysayers saying, oh, you better not try that keto, code red, low carb, high fat lifestyle. That, uh, I don't know about that. Really? Because I feel freaking fantastic. I don't care if someone were to tell me an animal-based diet causes cancer, Christy. I would say, well, I don't really care because I feel fantastic. So the few good years I have left before I die from cancer are going to be awesome years. I would rather die early from cancer and feel amazing those last few years I have left than go do something that society is telling me to do that's supposed to be safe from cancer, but I feel crappy every day because that's what I was doing before I founded Code Red. I was doing the proper, I was, no, I was doing the standard American diet. I was doing a low carb, I was doing a low fat, high carb. I was doing what I was taught in school. I was doing what I was taught in high school and in college. I was, I was following the government guidelines and I felt like absolute dog poop. So, it doesn't matter like when I switch to the proper human diet, a species-specific diet. That's when my experiment showed me, gosh, I feel really good. I don't care what the modern science, what, the, what modern medicine says. I don't give a ras fanny. I feel great, and all my five metabolic markers are low, are down, are within a safe range. Remember, the five metabolic markers, you ready for them? Blood pressure, a 120, it's got to be under 120 over 80. Triglycerides, under 150. Fasting glucose, under 100. A1C, under 5.7. And waist circumference, under 40 inches for a man, 33 inches for a woman. If you fail three out of those five, you are metabolically sick. I don't care what the government says. If it if you experimented with a certain diet and you felt fantastic and your metabolic markers are all good, who cares? Keep doing it. The proper human diet, a species specific diet. We believe that's what code red is. And that's why when people be like, I don't know, can kids do the code red diet? It's not a, it, it's, it's a human diet. Kids, old people, everybody. Kids don't need processed food just because they're kids. Just because the box has Dora the Explorer on it and they're Go-Gurts doesn't mean it's okay for your kids to eat that. They're marketing to your kids because they're not dumb. But you shouldn't be feeding them that. They're little humans. They need to be eating real food, moms and dads. Just because the cereal aisle is loaded with cartoon characters doesn't mean it's healthy for your kids. You guys go watch what's with wheat and go find out how the company Kellogg's was founded about a hundred years ago. Go find out what the, one of the Kellogg brothers, the reason go watch what's with wheat. We watch it for homework in the 10 pound takedown challenge. And you'll find out the reason one of the Kellogg brothers founded the cereal, the high carbohydrate cereal cornflakes. And you'll be completely shocked at the reason why. You want me to give you the answer? Because it lowered testosterone. And because there, there was this religious organization that he was a part of. And they wanted to suppress those testosterone to eliminate masturbating. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that just goes to show you high carbohydrates food. That's going to uh, bring your libido down. It's awful. So Code Red is safe for everybody because it's the proper human species-specific diet. And it really got, it really, it was clear to me before, but it was really clear to me after I watched it with Annabelle, after I switched her, her food to a, um, what I believe is a species-specific diet of raw food with chicken and eggs and fish and lots of, of bacon fat and, and different bone broth and different things that I have that works well for her, that I've experimented, that I believe works well for her. And I watched the way that she changed. And hopefully 
God willing and the creek don't rise, I have extended that dog's life for many more years because she is a huge part of Miles in my life. She is the love of our life. We love her more than anything. And I've been thinking about getting a second dog and I would do the same thing with a second dog. And if I had a baby, I would have my baby on the proper human diet as well. I would. You guys, thank you for uh, listening to this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I hope it kind of um, made you stop and think. Hmm. Hmm, Christy. Hmm. And, I, and again, I'm not trying to tell any of you guys how to feed your dogs. I'm just telling you what worked for me and what was convicting me in my mind and what was uh, bothering me about kibbles and bothering me about processed food for dogs or for elephants or for chimpanzees or for humans. I don't think any of us should be eating things that are outside of our species. What our species was designed to eat and for humans... An animal-based diet is what we were designed to eat. And I will argue that until the day I die because I have tried it both ways. I've, tried, I've been vegan. I was vegan for an entire year and I felt like absolute garbage. And I have eaten an animal-based product uh, diet and I, felt, I have felt better at almost 45 than I did ever at 25. So try it yourself. Try the Code Red lifestyle. Try experiment. Experiment on yourself because like Richard Feynman said, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. Experiment yourself. Test don't guess. Try it yourself. Our next 10-pound takedown challenge is starting soon. I would love to have you on it so that you can dip your toe into this lifestyle and find out if it's for you. Of course, we believe that the proper human diet is for everybody, but you got to be okay with my delivery. You got to be okay with the way I deliver the message. It might offend you because I'm pretty in your face about it because I believe passionately about it, but I also believe that this is the best way for you to live the rest of your life and, the, and heal your chronic diseases. You guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you're not subscribed already, please be sure to do that right now. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could do me a quick favor and rate and review this podcast. That would be just so helpful. Speaking of help, let me know if I can help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com, check out my programs, and see what we can do for you. Until next time, Rebel on.